This question appeared on the 2006 exam 2. So that's the extended response exam. And the question said this, the heights in centimetres and the ages in months of the 15 boys, so carrying on from a previous question, are shown in the scatter plot below. And we had, woo, scatter plot. And it looks like it's got a sort of positive trend to it. Okay, now what's the question asking us? Funnily enough, part A said, fit a three median line to the scatter plot. Circle the three points you used to determine this three median line. So they want to see that you can split these up into the right number of groups and that you can circle the median horizontally and vertically in those groups. Okay, so let's start by counting up how many there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Perfectly divisible by 3. We'll put 5 in each group. So going across the page, the first point I hit is that one. The next one I hit is that one. 3, 4, 5. So between these two is where my split is going to be. Like that. Now I want another 5. This is the first one. 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, that's the next one I hit, so between here and here is where my second split is going to be, like that, and then I should have 5 left over, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So far, so good. So let's find these medians. Now going up the page in this group, the first point I hit is this one, then that one, this is the third, fourth, fifth. And because I've got 5 points, the middle is going to be the third one. If I lined those up as a list, this one at 84, then this one at 85, then this one at 86, and so on and so on, this one would be the median. So that line there is where my median is going up the page. What about a cross? I hit this one first, then that one, then that one, then that one, then that one. So going across the page as well, it's the third one in, which also happens to be that one. So that is the median point right on that dot. But they've actually asked us to circle the three points used to determine this line. So I'm going to put a big circle around that point. Okay, let's do it for the next group. Going up the page, first one I hit is that one. Then that's number two, number three, number four, number five. Now in five points, the middle point is the third one, so it's that one. Do it going across the page. First one I hit is that one, then I hit that one, then I hit that one then I hit that one, then I hit that one. What do you know? Going across the page, it's that point too. So that point is going to be exactly where my median is. So I'll circle that one too. And this last group, going up the page, I hit this one first, then that one, there's the third, fourth, fifth. So this third one is where halfway up is going vertically. What about going across? What do you know? One, two, three, four, five. Going across, it's still this one too. So I'm just going to circle that one. So in this instance, I didn't have to create any new points on the graph because three of these dots happened to be those medians. So put your ruler on the page and line it up with those two end points. So I'm lining it up with this point and this point. Then I'm going to slide it a third of the way towards that middle median. Well, it's basically already crossing it. So I'm just going to draw my line along there. And that's part A done. The next part of the question said this. Determine the equation of the three median line. Write the equation in terms of the variables height and age. Okay, so that's instead of y and x. And give the slope and intercept correct to one decimal place. So we're going to need to know what the coordinates of these points are to work this out. So I've just drawn them on there. That one's 2386, this one's 2990, and this one's 3594. That might be a bit hard to read off on the screen, but on an exam paper, you can see what these are. Now, just giving myself a bit of room here for the workings. The first thing I'm going to find is the gradient. And I'm going to use these two endpoints, the left one and the right one, to find that. Now it actually turns out that these three dots, these three median lines that I've used, are all on the line, which is quite handy. I didn't have to really slide towards this middle one, they all kind of just fell on it. But I'm still going to use these two end ones to find the gradient, because that's how we apply these methods. The left and the right give us the median. So, m equals the difference in y 
over the difference in x. So we have 94 minus 86 over 35 minus 23, which gives us 8 over 12, which is 0 0.6 recurring, 0 0.66666. So when I round that up to one decimal place, it's going to be 0 0.7. But in my calculations for the next part, you would want to use 8 on 12 instead of 0 0.7, because if you round it up too early, you might get some rounding errors. So now I've found what the m is. I've got y equals m 0 0.7 x plus c. Now I just need to find what c is. Now sometimes you can read that off the graph if it's crossing the y-axis, but this one doesn't extend that far, so we're going to need to sub in a point that's on the line. Now normally with the 3 median line you can't really necessarily tell a point that's on the line, but in this case all three of them are actually crossing through. So you could sub in any one of these and you would get the answer to this. I'm just going to use this one here, 2386. So when y is 86 and x is 23, what does c equal? So we have 86 equals 0 0.7, or actually I'm going to use 8 on 12 so I don't get any rounding areas, errors, times 23 plus C. So 8 divided by 12 times 23 is 15.3 recurring. So we get 86 equals 15.3 recurring plus C. Now what's the operation that's happening to this 15.3? It's being added, so to take it over to the other side I'm going to subtract it. So 86 minus 15.3 recurring equals C, which gives us 70.6 recurring. And rounding that up I'll get to 70.7. So I've worked out Y equals 0.6 recurring, or now I can round these up, 0.7X plus 70.7. But the question asked us to express this equation in terms of the variables height and age instead of using y and x. So the last step here is to actually write this. Now what is the y? y going up here was height, so we have height equals 0 0.7 times what was the x? It was h plus 70.7. And there was a third part to this question which asked this. Explain why the 3 median line might model the relationship between height and age better than the least squares regression line. So we haven't covered least squares regression line in these tutes just yet, but having a think about why medians are useful, having a look at this scatter plot, what do you notice? If we were using all of the points in this scatter plot to determine a regression line, then this one out here would probably have sucked this line up towards it because the whole thing would need to move this way to work this one into the kind of average. So the useful thing about a 3 median line is that if you've got an extreme value like this, it doesn't affect the line quite as much. If that had been here, this line would have been in the exact same position because, you know, it's just it's the second one going across the page and it's the second one going up the page. So we still end up with this being the median point that we use to determine this line. So the answer to this question is about this extreme value sucking it up that way. And it looks like it's an outlier, but because we can't say that for sure just yet, don't in your answer say, hey look, this graph's got an outlier. Say it's got an extreme value, because until you've tested whether it's an outlier or not, you don't know for sure. So what are the coordinate points? It's at 20, 93. So we would say something like, the 3 median line is not as heavily affected or not as heavily influenced by extreme values such as occurs in this scatter plot at the point 2093. Let's do another example. This question appeared in 2004 on exam 1. And the question said, the time spent batting and the number of runs scored in a cricket player's last nine games are plotted on the scatter plot below. Voila, scatter plot. And the first question relating to this scatter plot said, when a 3 median regression line is fitted to the scatter plot, its slope is closest to. So you don't need to do the whole malarkey, they just want to know what the gradient is. 
So for that we're still going to need to figure out which are the points on the far left and far right that we're going to use. So let's quickly count up how many points there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Lovely, perfectly divisible by 3. We'll put 3 in each group. First one I hit going across is that one, then that one, then that one. So there's my split in between there. Then I hit 1, 2, 3 going across. So I'm going to split those ones up there and I have 3 left over. Now going up the page, which one is the median of these three? I hit that one first, then that one, then that one. So along there is the median going up. And what do you know? Going across, I hit this one, then this one, then this one. So there is the median going across the page as well. So this point I'm going to use as that median. What about in this group? Hey look, the same thing happens. Going up the page, you hit this one, then this one, then this one. So this is the median going up the page. And going across the page, you hit this one, then this one, then this one. So that's the median there too. Though I don't need to have worked that one out just quietly for this question, because I'm only going to need the left and the right to work out the gradient. Third group over here, up the page, you hit number one, then you hit number two, then you hit number three. So the one in the middle is this one. And going across, you hit this one, and then you hit this one, and then you hit this one, going across the page that way as well. So that point and that point are what I'm going to use. What are their coordinates? Reading off the graph, this one is at 25 and 11. So we've got the point 25, 11. And over here, this one is occurring somewhere between 150 and 155. So let's call that 152.5. And the y coordinate is happening somewhere between 50 and 52. So let's just call that 51. So now, difference in y over difference in x 51 minus 11 over 152.5 minus 25 gives me 40 over 127.5, which gives me 0 0.3. One, but let's round it to 0 0.3. So your answer is B. The next question related to this scatter plot as well, so I'll just show you that one. The question said, the data point 70, 55 should have been plotted instead of the point 70, 35. If this mistake is corrected, the slope of the redrawn three median regression line will be A, very much greater than before, B, greater than before, C, less than before, D, very much less than before, or E, unchanged. So let's find that data point that they're talking about. They plotted this on there and they meant to do this. So 70, 35, where's that? 70, 35, that's here. This is the one that they're talking about. Okay, it's in the middle group. So they're saying that should have been 70, 55. It should have been up here somewhere. That's where that point should have been. Now if this mistake was corrected, the slope of the redrawn me three median regression line will be. What will happen to the slope? Does this point here have anything to do with the slope? No, we determine the slope by using these outside ones. So if this point moves, it doesn't make one iota of difference. We're still going to be figuring out the slope based on these two, so it doesn't change. So the answer is E. The slope would be unchanged. Doesn't make a difference. Let's do one more. This question appeared in 2002 on exam one. And it said, a person's weight is also known to be positively associated with their height. To investigate this association for 12 men, a scatter plot is constructed as shown below. There it is. Whoa, scatter plot out there. While there is a moderately strong positive linear relationship between weight and height, yes, we can see that, moderately strong relationship, positive, there is a clear outlier. That would be this guy. Sneaky bugger. Because of this, it is decided to model the relationship by fitting a three median line to the data displayed in the scatter plot. Aha, that's because three median lines are not as affected by extreme values, such as these hinky little outliers. So the slope of this three median line is closest to. Again, they're asking us to find the slope. So we need to split these dots up into three groups and use the far left median and the far right median to get a slope. So how many of them are there? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of them. 
perfectly divisible by 3. How handy! So we'll put 4 in each group. Now going across the page, I hit this one first, then that one, then that one, then that one there. So I'm going to split my first 4. Then I hit 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's my next split, and I should have 4 left over. 1, 2, 3, 4. Perfect! So, find the median of this group. Going up the page, I hit this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. When I have four of them, the median of four points is going to be between the second and the third. So that's number one, that's number two, that's number three. So it's going to be there between number two and number three. What about going across the page? I hit this guy first, number two, that's number three, and that's number four. So again, it's going to be between the second and the third, which is going to be there. So that is where that median point is and its coordinates are well this is at 165 and this is at 166 so we've got 165.5 for the x coordinate and here we have 64 okay I'm gonna skip this one because I don't need that for slope over here going up the page we hit that one then he's number two then he's number three going up the page and that would be number four so somewhere between two and three which is in there and going across the page, which one do I hit first? I hit him first, then that one there, then that one there, then that one there. So somewhere between the second and the third, in fact, dead in the middle of them. So on that line there. So there is my median point. Now let's figure out some rough coordinates of that. It's on 180 for X. And on the Y, this one had a Y coordinate of 97, and this one had a Y coordinate of 98. So splitting those two up, we get 97.5. Now, difference in Y over difference in X, I'm going to have 97.5 minus this Y, which was 64, divided by 180 minus that X, which was 165.5 gives me 33.5 divided by 14.5 and that is 2.31. So rounding that to one decimal place, 2.3, my answer is D.